Hello, this is Steve, E6WZ. I'd like to present this uh, video on how I affect my uh, main antenna switching at the V6WZ remote. I had recently uploaded a video discussing my direction switching for both the transmit array and my various receive antennas. And uh, subsequently and prior, I had received some questions about my uh, main transmit um, antenna switching. So hopefully this will provide a quick summary of, uh, of how I, I do that and, and might provide ideas uh, for others. Uh, but, but first of all, I, I consider there to be three main categories for uh, switching of any kind uh, at, at a remote station. Um, the first I call frequency dependent antenna switching and, and essentially this is uh, any kind of switching that is related to the frequency of the uh, transceiver. Obviously um, band uh, changes uh, uh, and also in band segment selection and I'll talk more about that uh, in particular at my location with the types of antennas that I have. Uh, could also uh, involve detuning relays, which I also do. Uh, for example, I need to detune some uh, antennas in my tower when I'm on 160 meters. And it might also include switching in bandpass filters and, and things such as that. Anything related to the frequency of the radio. The second type of uh, switching, which is unique in itself, is direction switching. And as I said, I did provide and have a video for that. Uh, already on my uh, YouTube channel if you want to uh, visit that. And the third category is, well, per, frankly, everything else. I call it shack peripherals, but it could include, say, turning an amps on and off or toggling between different amplifiers, uh, antenna routing, uh, which I do, for example, swapping my main and sub receive antennas on the transceiver for different reasons, uh, swapping rigs. I've had uh, different uh, rigs at the remote. Um, I've had the K3 and, for example, a Yesu and now a Flex. So I have a relay which uh, toggling that one relay affects the uh, uh, swapping of the CAT data, the receive antennas and the transmit antennas, essentially by, you know, building some relay boxes and, and other types of uh, control boxes, which uh, once there's a relay activated, all those will uh, will effectively uh, cause those changes to happen. Uh, you know, you could turn lights on and off at the remote as needed, or in fact, um, you could even reboot computers and various devices. I won't talk about that. I mean, those these other this third category is quite simply done many different ways. I use um, a, a relay board. Um, which is uh, connected through USB to the PC at the remote, and I have an interface which allows me to cause these switches to occur. Uh, you can also get uh, Ethernet boards, which can be accessible across the World Wide Web as well to do that. But anyway, we're going to talk about uh, frequency-dependent uh, antenna uh, switching. Uh, Essentially, your antenna should follow the radio automatically versus the old school mechanical hand operated antenna selector, which we all had in the old days. If I'm on 80 meters, I got to switch on my 80 meter uh, uh, switch to my 80 meter antenna. I mean, this is in absolutely not new. In fact, perhaps the majority of hams today already do this. But um, this what I want to talk about is the method I use, and, and I don't know, I mean, if, if you haven't used uh, uh, this, well, I use the Station Master band decoder, and there are others out there, but this video might provide some detail on the, uh, the uh, flexibility of this particular device. Essentially what happens, of course, is you're basically getting CAT data from the radio, and it's decoded and it drives relays that are used to switch the antennas. I mean, that's all it is. It's uh, fairly simple and it's basically called a band decoder. There's been a lot around over the years. It's not new, as they say. There's Bandmaster, RemoteQTH.com has them, Top 10, ON4, AOI, uh, and then Station Master by Microham. That's what I use and uh, that's what I'm going to discuss here and, and talk about. Um, it's, it's obviously essential for any remote because you're not there to switch antennas mechanically. And obviously contest setups will always use this type of thing so that, you know, it just makes life easier. Uh, you know, you, you turn, you switch bands and, and everything that's related to that band antenna-wise will automatically be selected. 
Uh, as I mentioned earlier at V6WZ, at my remote, um, I require a fairly complex in-band switching uh, because of my uh, shortened 80 and 40 meter Yaggies. Um, they do require a comprehensive antenna switching system. I don't need just band switching. In other words, I don't need just, okay, I'm on 40, 40 meters or 80 meters and, and select that one, uh, one uh, feed line. I have a, a complex system here, and I'm going to show you how I affected that. Um, in fact, you'll notice uh, here, this is a photo of the 80 and 40 meter Yagi at my location. And I've circled in red here. You can see at the feed point of the 80 meter uh, element and the 40 meter element, there are boxes. I got to zoom in here. So each uh, antenna element has a box. And um, I won't go into detail, obviously. I have a a web page describing my 80 meter Yagi, but simply because it's a shortened Yagi, shortened elements, it's inductor loaded, it's got a very narrow bandwidth. And I, in fact, um, I've purposely tuned this Yagi to maximize gain, but when you do that, you greatly uh, narrow and in, uh, shorten and diminish the bandwidth. And because of that, I have these boxes at each element. And you can see a, 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 the box itself here with, with inductors and vacuum relays. Okay, And every one of these relays will be uh, toggled in to uh, select the um, operating band, uh, band segment. So here's the schematic of the uh, of my Yagi. So you know every I have I have eight relays uh, in this uh, each box and uh, and and to the left here you'll see that this is the matrix which describes which relays are active on which frequency. So for example at the bottom of 80 meters uh, all eight relays are active. Uh, then on uh, anyway, so on and so forth. This is the matrix that occurs to uh, to move myself along the band. Uh, the, on 80 meters alone, on 80 meters alone, I have 18 band segments. I have five band segments on 40 meters and four band segments on my 160 meter parasitic array. For myself, before I even began to look for a remote QTH, I needed to understand how I was going to affect this type of switching remotely. So uh, it was essential that I, I figured this out. And that's what I'm going to describe to you here. Um, so for example, this is actually a, a sweep of, of what the 80 meter Yagi looks like uh, across the band, beginning on the left at the bottom at the CWN and all the way up to the, C, the phone portion. And each one of these is my SWR profile for um, for for that for for when the, each relay is activated, uh, here's my 40 meter Yagi, uh, what it uh, what it looks like, and here's my 160 meter parasitic array as each uh, relay is uh, band segment is activated. So how how do we do that? Okay, so what I have used is uh, what's called the Station Master by Microham. By the way, I have absolutely no association with these guys. I just use this system and it works great. So I just thought I'd uh, share how I've set this all up. Th uh, this b particular band decoder has 20 internal relays and also has the ability to um, affect virtually unlimited frequency slices. And I'm going to show you how, you how that happens. It also, by the way, has the ability to control your rotor uh, as needed with an actual PC interface if you wanted. I mean, I do mine differently. I don't use that capability. It also has a virtual rotator in it uh, or a capability in that to actually control receive and transmit arrays. I also don't use that, but it can be done where you use the internal relays to switch receive and transmit arrays. It's also got a built-in sequencer to uh, pr provide transmit and receive relay control timing uh, as well. Now you can control your amplifier with it, and it's all driven with a PC-based GUI and a graphic user interface uh, for uh, programming the device. And I'll show you how that how that works. So just to try and understand how how this thing functions. Um, uh, there are 20 relays, as I said, and they are output from the box with two uh, different 25 pin D sub connectors uh, with 10 relays on each of them. And they're called port A and port B. And each of these ports can be set to 
deliver either 12 volts uh, or an external up to 24 volt supply as as you need or or it could be set to go low in other words to ground them depending on how you've set up your switching for your antennas the photographs here the diagrams uh, this is actually from the station master manual but i've annotated it to describe my system um, so on the left this is what i what's called port a okay so you can see these are the relays which are uh, the first 10 relays which are in the station master device you see they're called port uh, a one two three four five and this is port a and this is just showing how which pinout assignment they are on this uh, on this uh, 25 pin D sub. Then there's uh, on the right this is port B, and so it's essentially the same uh, more or less. Um, and you know, and in this case they're called port B, uh, one through uh, one through ten. Um, there's a few subtleties here where these are isolated relays, but effectively it's the same uh, same system. So essentially two. Of output ports with 10 relays on uh, on each of them you can see that I've hand annotated what I've done and you know for example my 80 meter Yagi relays are assigned to uh, port A uh, with uh, with these relays I have my 160 meter band switch is assigned to those my 40 meter antennas and my my other HF antenna relays are assigned to uh, th these these relays um, the, the specifics aren't important, but hopefully you'll be able to follow along how this thing works. Um, so there is a graphic user interface, a GUI here, with, that comes with the program. So you pull this up, and, I, and I'll show a, a little bit later a little more detail on this, but hopefully this will be fairly clear on how it works. You will create what's called antennas. Um, and for each antenna, you will define which relays will be active. And then, and then in what's called the band tab, and I'll show this later, I think this is really the essence of it. And I think you'll understand. If you'll see here on this interface, I will select and in annotate the frequency range that I wish this antenna to be active on. So from 3524 to 3543 on the 80 meter band, um, these are the relays which will be activated. And it, in fact, I'll just explain it. Uh, that for example, B2, what that is, that's my, um, my antenna relay uh, box at the top of the tower to select the 80 meter feed line. Uh, so when B2 is activated, the 80 meter feed line is activated to the antenna. And then these other relays, uh, A1, A1, A2, A3, A4, A6, and A7 will be activated on that frequency. Between the, and then below that frequency 3543 to 3564. Okay, the next band segment, uh, obviously this B2 is still active, but um, only A1, A2, and A3 are active. And, and now A6 and A7 are also active. So this, this, and you'll notice as we move down frequency, the, the relays are changing. This is basically following my uh, antenna switching matrix for the 80 meter Yagi, uh, which I showed. So this is a snapshot of basically the flexibility to how it works uh, and how you can define uh, different frequencies for different bands. Uh, the same is true and then as soon as I go to 40 meters, I will have the 40 meter antenna activated, which will change, it'll go to B3, I think, which is selecting the uh, 40 meter feed line and then I have different relays uh, that will, will uh, affect the band changes. So this is what the box looks like at the remote. It's at the top. I showed you a picture of it before, but this is the, at the top is the actual uh, station master device. Below that is uh, a what I call my uh, header distribution box. And I'm going to show you what that's about and why I built that. Because um, this is the back of the Station Master uh, box. And these are the 25 pin D sub out output connectors. And what I needed to try and do was distribute all of these different relays out to the different antennas. So you'll notice that I have a cables connecting to what I call my distribution header box on the bottom. This is the box on the bottom. You'll see a number of DB9 connectors. Uh, you, you might be able to read. This is my 80 meter, my 40 meter. This is my 
other controller, my 160 meter, and I have. So this box essentially is built to distribute the 20 relays from the station master box. So I'm just showing you how I, I affected the distribution of these relays. And so now this is inside that box that I built. And I must confess, this is bordering on embarrassing. Um, but but it, it actually, when it first was built, was much neater. But like a lot of things, it gets away on you and things get added. But essentially, the the 20 uh, relays from the station master are put onto this etched circuit board and then are distributed through this terminal block, okay? So that I can easily, through this terminal block, distribute uh, into these DB9s on the back panel to each uh, antenna. For example, the 80 meter Yagi is, happens to be this DB9 on the top right. That has a Cat5 cable which runs out to the tower and up to the top of the Yagi and is used to select the, uh, the 80 meter Yagi um, uh, relays as, as needed. Uh, there's a few other things in this box that I won't, that I won't talk about. So I'm just going to now go uh, and switch to my uh, actual uh, GUI and, and show you a few more details of this of the station master. This uh, particular uh, image is actually um, my um, actual remote station. This is the PC at the remote being viewed uh, through uh, Team Viewer, and um, as I mentioned, the graphic user interface uh, that comes with Station Master is what is used to uh, program the box. It's it's really nothing more than a really kind of a text editor, I think, which is then flashed to the to the box to uh, to program it as as you wish. And this is the interface that does that. Uh, you'll see there's a number of tabs. I'm only going to go through so much of this because the purpose of this is mostly just to give someone the opportunity to um, give you guys an opportunity to sort of see how this thing works in case it might uh, suit your needs and be something you'd like to try out. So. I've opened up what's called the antennas tab and this is this is the first thing you'll do and that is you'll you'll create what's called an antenna uh, for example I've uh, the, the, the first ones here on this list happen to be the uh, 80 meter Yagis so each Yagi segment okay each segment on 80 meters uh, is given an antenna name which which is kind of weird but that's the way it works so You'll notice that on, I think I mentioned to uh, earlier, that on the low end of 80 meters, uh, all of the uh, uh, relays that are uh, used um, at the antenna feed point are activated, A1 through A7, and B2, this relay happens to uh, toggle the um, Amiratron antenna switch at the top of the tower to activate the 80 meter feed line. So, um, so this is this is what's called antenna 3500. Okay, this is the, this is the bottom segment. Then I create another antenna, and then th this one just sees it almost the same, except this one relay is not on, and then so on and so forth all the way through uh, 80 meters. Okay, and I'm going to scroll down here so you'll see these are all the antennas I built. It's it's perhaps unlikely anyone will ever have such a complex antenna s system, uh, but but this shows you that it's it's virtually unlimited. Um, uh, as to how you could uh, could switch antennas. I mean, you could do anything with this, uh, I, I think is really what I want to portray. Uh, and then down here, you can see this is 40 meters. I built 40 meter antennas for all of the different segments of 40 meters. And, and in this case, I'm using the A port and relays and they're changing as we go. Here's my 80 and below is my 160 meter segments. Uh, and then down at the very bottom is HF, and I mean basically this uh, this toggles one relay on the antenna on the antenna box at the top of the tower to uh, select the feed line uh, going to the opti beam. So you build all of these, and then we go to what's called bands. You'll see to the right here. This is a uh, tab called bands, and this is the place where you will then select the frequency uh, around which each of those will be active. So. Uh, well, I, it's organized by the lowest frequency. So here on 160 meters, you, you can see that I've selected this antenna, which I created, which, uh, uh, you know, is used for this frequency segment uh, and then so on and so forth. And I can scroll down here uh, and you'll notice this is all the 160 meters antennas. And here we are into the 80 meter antennas. 
So for each frequency range, I just tell it which antenna to use, and it automatically will um, select those uh, those relays. Uh, and then I go all the way down, and there's 48, all oh, the rest of 80 meters and 40 meters, and so it it's limitless in terms of uh, how how you can uh, can make this thing go. And I even I even use in this case, you'll notice on 30 meters. Okay, I don't have an antenna for 30 meters, but what I said is, well, go ahead and use the 80 meter Yagi, uh, because what I found is it kind of can tune uh, somewhat below three to one um, by using the 80 meter Yagi. So as soon as the radio is turned to 30 meter band, um, I've automatically selected the 80 meter Yagi, which will work. So hopefully this will uh, give you the idea of um, how, uh, you know, a device like this uh, can automate everything to do with frequency. There is no need whatsoever to, uh, uh, you don't do anything. Whenever the band, the, fr the frequency has changed, the antennas will, uh, will follow you. Uh, the other benefit of this station master, of course, is the cat data, it just comes in. Uh, it's not coming, it's coming from the radio, but I have the ability, as I said, if I switch radios, um, I've got a device which will toggle the cat data. So it doesn't matter what radio I'm on, as long as it's getting the cat data, it will um, automatically uh, switch my antennas. Uh, one last thing, or the, the, basically what you'll do is you'll uh, be, and you'll also be able to, of course, save this, all this data to a file so that you can retrieve it at any time uh, whenever you make changes to it. And, uh, and then what you'll do, of course, is you say store and that'll flash it to, uh, to the device. Anyway, um, you know what? That's, I think, enough to hopefully give everyone a, at least a bit of a feel for um, how this particular band decoder can make life very uh, simple and straightforward uh, at a remote station. Thanks for watching.